If there's a bloke that I've ever met with serious self-belief, you could see when he was on top of his game why he was so good, because he just believed he would do it. And when your confidence is that high, it doesn't matter whether you're hitting a golf ball or driving a motor car, you'll kind of succeed. I went to Bathurst in 94 as co-driver to Brad Jones, way out of my depth, scared of the track, but it wasn't until the moment that Brock sat me down and I still use those pinpoint placings today of where I need to position the car, how I flow the car, what I need to do to turn the car in. And I think that uh, for me personally, that's, that's invaluable. By 1994, Peter Brock had come full circle. He'd been a factory holding guy, He'd busted up and got divorced. He'd gone off and had a few flirtations with BMW and Ford. He'd come back around to Holden and then come fully back around to the Holden racing team, which by then was the, the factory back squad. This is where the action is. Brock right on scape here as they head up toward Repco Corner. He's got the right line for the turn if he keeps it on hard. It's side by side into the right-hander. And Brock goes through to take the lead in the 94 great race with it sideways out of the turn. I always thought we had that so race under control. I made my final stop and uh, steady laps to go. Beautiful fill up there and send Brocky out. I go and have a shower. I come out of the shower and Bradley with a smile from ear to ear. Guess what, guess what? Brock just smashed it up on top of the mountain. <laughs> Well, Thomas's view might be a little bit different to mine, but from my memory, we were inside getting a massage and we had a little telly. And, uh, you know, you hear the guy scream out that a HRT car was in the fence at the top of the mountain. That's Brocky. That's, it's, oh, Brock. it's Brock. It's Brocky. There's the man. And he's out of the car. The car is a non-finisher. And, you know, after all the work you've done all day, you know, I was a bit worried that it was our car. And so, you know, I've had a really good look at the telly and. And then I've turned around with a grin on my face and said to Thomas, bad luck, it's Brock. <laughs> Let's watch this again, Doug. Here he goes. This is, a, this is at race speed. Oh, Roach. That was the bit of the racetrack that he loved the most. So ironically, it was the bit where he came unstuck and really uncharacteristic for him to have arrived there, made a mistake and ended up wearing the concrete. We had to race one. Like he needed to just circulate him because the other cars had to stop, yeah? And uh, he would have won it. He would have got his... Tenth Bathurst. 1995 is possibly the deepest and darkest day for the Holden Racing team in the history of their time at Bathurst. Everything was running too good, and uh, top ten shootout. Up with the next really tricky corner. This is. Brock's bloody smashes it in a bloody cutting. Stride bang, straight in the bloody. Not his fault. Not his fault. It was the. It was uh, Thomas left too much rear brake bias on it on a car. Yeah. Then uh, anyway. And you'll be able to hear the first thing we, we get out was in the morning, Sunday morning. And I go out. I make it to the top of the mountain. Bloody oil pressure light comes on. I turn it off. Goes down in a pitch. And I said, boys, the, you know, oil pressure. Oh, it's electric. <laughs> and then they find out it's bloody water and oil. Yeah, there's a leak. A lot of pressure on young Craig Lowndes. He'll have heaps of it on. He'll probably run and try and run. Well, like, uh, what do you do? There's no time to change engines, to put back the practice engine. They're off. They're racing. Skate bogs are down. Perkins gets off to a good start. Down the outside comes Wayne Gunn. It's, uh, it, it, it was a disaster because, like, we got it on the start line. And we knew, like, we're not going to last. Uh -oh. And uh, it looks like the 05 car, I believe, that uh, with Peter Brock. No, it's, no, it's, no, it's, it's the 015 Craig Lowndes. I remember, I think it was lap 13 for me. I was coming down Conrad Strait. Our engine seized, managed to roll it back into the pits. And of course, at that moment, then the focus went to the other car, which was Brock Mazira. The uninitiated, you can see the lines. Lap 31, Brock's in. As soon as I jump in a car, you can smell the burnt bloody metal. And I start the thing up. 
and it slid like a Christmas tree. Everything just off the bloody rocket. At the moment, we've got Thomas Mazira here. Thomas, what seems to be the problem? And it was the easiest race to win. Larry won it from left down. Larry Perkins and Russell Engel, the great race winners, the Two East 1000 for 1995. Brock was very good at getting out of a car that was about to destroy itself and uh, I don't think he actually ever finished a race uh, in a smouldering wreck. I think he always handed that to his co-driver. Flag is about to drop. Track is wet. Rain has stopped well. It was wet. But away. The and race starts, you can find Brock, can you? Oh, Thomas, you're going to start. I said, oh, shit, I don't want to start in a wet, you know. And, oh, well, yeah, yeah, no, you, um, all right, no, I'll jump in the car. And, uh, and doing all right, actually. Uh, oh, yeah, Lance was leading. Seaton, second through the dipper. There's Alan Jones and the pack leader, Ford Brock. Or Mazira, I should say, in the Brock Mazira HRT car in fourth. Anyway, I get a call from Hawk on the radio. The he said, well, come in for a pit stop. I said, Hawk, I'm not, I'm not coming. Come in for a pit stop, you need to do it. I said, no, I've got plenty of fuel. Circuit's drying up. And uh, I reckon uh, I've got fuel for another, another five, six laps. And then we put Brock on slicks. No, oh, you need to come in. And I didn't. You know, then we, he, on again, you know. And said, oh, come in, you know. Anyway, like, I came in. I shouldn't have. I should have bloody stay out there. Somewhat, you can see belts off for Thomas Mazira and uh, Andy Raymond is there. Yes, Thomas Mazira out. Peter Brock in. And, uh, Peter Brock could probably... I come in. <laughs> Wheels on. And I jump out of the car. I waved him up. And, uh, and I said, you put him on slip. No, we put him on a wet. And, I said, and then I lost it. Then I lost it. I said, mate, you just bloody lost us a race. As we said, Peter Brock jumping in the car and Team HRT are very aware of the 60 kilometre limit going up speed lane. They had a drama with a, a pit stop call on changing tyres in the wet weather conditions. Uh, Brock had a little scrape at the top of the mountain. Uh, they did come home in the top five or six, but the reality was that it was all about the other car, Craig Lands and Greg Murphy, who, who won in 1996. But that period, with those drivers in those cars, there's no doubt that that was some of the best opportunities that Peter Brock had to win his 10th Bathurst at Mount Panorama. I would have loved to say that you know, we actually drove together in a sense of our car. We drove together as a team. We drove many road cars together, but uh, never a race car. So uh, for me, you know, I don't regret too much, but uh, there's probably one regret that you know, would have liked to have said that uh, you, know, you, raced, you raced with Peter Brock in the same race car. We all thought that 1997, middle of October, the V8 race was Brock's last chance to win his 10th Bathurst. And if you looked at everything on paper, he had the best chance. They'd signed Mark Scaife, who'd finished up with Gibson Motorsport. This big field of V8 sort themselves out, but it's Peter Brock in 0-5. He'll lose this field up Holden Hill toward Repco Corner for the first time. I was, you know, very proud to, to go and drive with Peter and... and um, it was sort of almost a new era for me. It was replacing Brock, essentially, at Holden Racing Team. Let's hope, let's uh, not get too carried away too early. Let's cross our fingers and hope that uh, Mark Scaife and Peter Brock can continue to give Brock every possible chance of winning that 10th. That now... Halfway up Mountain Straight, pff, lights out. Reported in that things weren't great. Come in and uh, day done. That's motor racing. I mean, you know full well when you embark on this whole business of going in a motor race that you can go through the highs and lows. And, uh, I mean, we had a magnificent run thus far. It's just running absolutely beautifully. And uh, I guess that if you've looked at it one perspective, well, the fans were uh, treated to something there for a couple, for an hour or two, you know. And uh, But to come back from here will be uh, pretty well impossible, I guess. There were rumours in the middle of 2002 that Peter Brock was going to come back to Bathurst. So that got a lot of people fired up. I mean, this was five years after he'd retired from full-time driving. Pete being Pete, his self-belief was he was going to get our Team Brock car. 
rock up at Bathurst, say good day to his mates like Scafie and everything, whack it on pole, win the race, probably do the fastest lap of the race on the last lap. And this was sort of his whole vision of going to Bathurst. I was sort of thinking completely the opposite. I'm probably the only bloke that's ever said it, but at, at that time, Pete was probably an average driver. You know, he wasn't a Mark Scape, he wasn't a Greg Murphy. He just hadn't thought about racing, you know, he was just, just cold turkey. Denier has joined them. Yeah, thanks, Billy. Uh, unfortunately for Peter, they've got some temperature problems in this car. They've been monitoring it over the last several laps, and while it's not a high temperature, it is still an issue. So what they've done is they've just had a look at the radio. He said to me, I, I think it was, Honestly, it would have been 15 minutes before qualifying. I was gearing up, and he said, no, you know what? Um, the fans have come to see me. A true story. The fans have come to see me. I think I can dig deeper, and I, I, I'll drag this thing up the field a bit. So I, I'm going to qualify. And I didn't know whether he was joking or not, but that was the bloke's self-belief. So you could imagine f 15 years ago, when he was on top of his game. The nine-time Bathurst champion at the moment, it looks as though this charge has come to an end. 30 years to the weekend, if you like, since Brocky first won this race back in 72. As the 2004 event come on, Peter had made it known that he was going to come back and have a drive. And I personally felt that I didn't want him to be in a shitbox. I seriously did not want a bloke of that ilk to be driving an ordinary car. And I, I almost felt compelled as the factory team to give him his last drive because of his Holden history. And I knew that he wasn't going to be competitive, but I also knew that I didn't want him to be in something that the brake pedal was going to fall on the floor or the throttle was going to jam. So I, I, I thought it was a nice finish for him. But I sat down with Peter, just he and I, and I said, I'll tell you what, PB, love you like a brother, we are not gonna come out of this weekend with any drama. So, you play by our rules, we'll give you a really good car, we'll put a really good bloke in with you, which we put Jason Plato in the car with him, and you come and have some fun, but no aggro. The whole thing is, we finished the weekend with not a bad word, that was the key. He, he really embraced it, you know, walking around in a factory suit, um, signing autographs, having his arm around the guys. Um, it, was, it was a really nice thing to do. It was a great way to put a full stop on paper. Unfortunately, as history shows, Brock didn't even get in the car on race day. It's the tyres. Right on the pit straight entry. And Jason Plato, the British co-driver that was signed up, uh, tapped the wall, limping back to the pit lane, and then chaos unfolded. We'll find out from oh, oh, big problem! A car has rolled, and that is the Clellan Jones Falcon. It's gone over on its head. John Clellan at the wheel. And Smashed, crashed. That's the end of Peter Brock's Bathurst 1000 career. It was an amazing day. It was great to see Brock back in the 05 in a factory red car. Although the result wasn't there, it was a nice way for him to end his career as a factory Holden driver at Mount Panorama 35 years after he'd first turned up there. We've been advised that there's been a, a tragic accident in an event being held in and around Perth and uh, unfortunately as a result of that incident uh, Peter Brock has been killed. I spoke at the funeral, um, which was a, probably the hardest thing, you know, one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. We used to call him the icon, and he hated it, but he is, he it was the icon. So you feel very honoured driving, you know, having your name on the list that's got Brock's name on it as a HRT driver and as a Bathurst HRT winner. He was the best, still is the best, and. His legacy lives on because of the stuff he did out of the race car. It made him the champion he, he was. I just was in awe even to be near him and you know, everything I pretty much owned that was racing has his signature on it. The Brock uh, legacy will be there forever and there's no doubt that regardless if anyone does beat the, the Magical Nine wins, Brock will still be the first, it'll be the longest and he'll be the king of the mountain.